the redemptive gifts. And then in 1 Corinthians, they, um, the scripture talks about the manifestation gifts, which are the works of the spirit. And then in Ephesians, we, ta- we um, hear and we are taught about the fivefold office gifts or the governmental gifts. Those are the gifts that strengthen um, and edify and mature the body of Christ. So, so why is it so important that we learn about these gifts? Like I said, the Holy Spirit is designed to uh, provide us comfort and teach us things. So we need to know how the Holy Spirit motivates, how the Holy Spirit moves, and how, especially how the Holy Spirit moves through people. So Romans chapter 12, let's look at verses 6 through 8. So now remember, as we read these, these are your redemptive gifts or your motivational gifts. These gifts, um, it, it, it depicts your personality and how you show up in the world. So verse 6, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, Whether, now here are the list of them, prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministering. Or he that teacheth on teaching. Or he that exhorteth on exhorting, exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity or liberation. Let him be free to give. He that ruleth or leads, let him do it with diligence. And he that shows mercy with cheerfulness. Now, as Pastor Lane was saying, uh, we call these the motivational gifts because they're designed to motivate the body of Christ, especially to complete a task, and that is to spread the gospel throughout the world. It's part of the great commission in which we have all been called to do. Now, this morning, we're going to hone in on one specific gift, and that is a, uh, a prophet, right? So now remember, these redemptive gifts, it doesn't necessarily mean that when you show up um, with, it's like a personality. You're showing up with the personality of a prophetic. Uh, it's a prophetic personality. It's a server's personality. It's a leader's personality. And so you show up in the world like this so that you can lead people to Christ in your own specific way. So um, it's I, your I design. Some, and I think sometimes we, uh, we tend to think of the fivefold ministry, and then we sort of blend these together. Yeah, yeah. So this is and not what not we're so talking about. Right. We're talking about a personality trait. Yes. That's what we're going to look at today. We're not saying that if you have this personality trait, you're walking in the office of, of a, a prophet. prophet. That's right. So, so don't misunderstand that. Right. We're that's just saying right. that you got an attitude like a prophet. <laughs> that, that's all <laughs> That's all we're saying, right? So don't get it twisted. All right? Um, go, go to slide number four. <laughs> we just really want to hone this in. We, because if you see, oh, my gosh, that is me. I'm, I'm a prophet. That's not what we're saying. So Nancy Bentz, you can go to shamarministries.com, and you can look at it more specifically. She's got a lot of information up there. This is how she um, pins it. The whole of your design includes a carefully selected compilation of what? Characteristics that God knew would be needed and suitable for the particular purpose he had in mind when he created you. So this is your, (laughs) these are your characteristics. Mm -hmm. So if you go to that next slide, um, we are going to be looking at for these next few weeks, your specific spiritual DNA, Mm -hmm. the prophetic personalities DNA the servant personalities, DNA, and so on and so forth, that you're going to see how, oh, my gosh, that's why they're the way they are. Oh, that's why they are. That's just how they are fashioned, and that's how they show up in their personality. And also, there is something, uh, we did it here before, called a spiritual gifts test. Yeah. Uh, So we encourage you to uh, take that spiritual gifts test so that it gives you an idea of where uh, God is leading you. Uh, Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 before we start talking about the prophet. I just want to put some more scriptures in your reading, in your hearing. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we're going to look at verses 7 through 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 7 through 11. Now, these are the manifestation gifts or the charismata gifts. These gifts influence, um, starting at verse 7. But the manifestation... Or the revealing of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom. 
to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit. And look at the rank and order of these. To another the gifts of healing by the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, discerning of spirits, to another, diverse kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and self same spirit, remember we had the teaching on the Holy Spirit, dividing every man severely as he will. So we see that the spirit is a source of all of these gifts. Yes. And the scripture says that he divided as he wills, yes. right? So even when you uh, take a gifts test, uh, sometimes when we take these spiritual tests, we take it under the mind frame that we are something already. Yes. In other words, we don't take it to try to, to discover who we are. We take it to, to validate who we believe we are already. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So listen, it comes from the heart. The spirit, the spirit of God gives you these gifts, right? So you can't make yourself walk in a certain area. Let's go to Ephesians real quick. Ephesians chapter 4. I think we have done the uh, body of Christ a disservice by handing out gifts like we're handing out programs. And it's the Lord that gives you that gift. And if somebody says something to you in regard to a gift, it should be a confirming word. When you go to the coffee shop, you shouldn't be saying, here's a cup of coffee. Are you a prophet? Because, or you look like a prophet or you look like an apostle. Because what we're doing is we're trying to put people in certain categories. And I think we say stuff like that to sound spiritual or holy. But what we're doing is we're putting people in bondage and putting them under the pressure to be what you have called them to be and not what God called them to be. Ephesians chapter 4. Look at verse 11. And he gave some, what? Look at the rank and the order. Look, uh, and he gave some, what? Apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry to edify the body of Christ. In other words, Mm -hmm. to promote growth. You know, when you when you study uh, spiritual gifts, wherever you see any types of gifts in Scripture, it always comes back to one thing: the unity of the body. It all comes back to the unity of the body, right? Be- why? Because it's one spirit. It's the same spirit. It, it's all designed for the body. When Christ came, He only spoke what the Father said. And when he says, I will leave you a comforter, he's only going to teach you what I have taught you, right? He's only going to bring back to your remembrance the things that you have heard me say. Well, what did you say, Jesus? Well, I said what the Father said. So it's one spirit. This is very important that you understand it. It's one voice and one spirit. Amen. Where am I? Verse 13. How long is he going to... How long has he given us these gifts? How, how long are we supposed to operate in these gifts? Till we all come in the unity or agreement of the truth or faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect or mature man, unto the measure of the stature of the fulfillment of Christ. So until we all come into the knowledge of who? Unto the knowledge of Christ. So the Holy Spirit is doing exactly what Jesus said the Holy Spirit is going to do. Mm-hmm. You see that in the text? That we henceforth, verse 14, these are the, this is the reason for these doma gifts. These are called doma gifts or governmental gifts. This lays a foundation to build the, the body. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, which means to be mentally agitated and carried about with every wind of doctrine or teaching by the slate or the deception of men and with their cunning craftiness or their trickery why by, whereby they lie in wait. Now, I don't know if you are paying close attention to what we're teaching here at Kadosh, but if you remember, the first thing that we established was doctrine. You have to understand doctrine, right? Then we moved into what? Salvation, right? Then after we moved into salvation, once you're saved, Jesus is going to send the 
Holy Spirit. But you need to understand it's not goosebumps. It's not a feeling. It is a person. And since the Holy Spirit is a person, you need to listen to what the person is saying because the person is only speaking what Jesus said. And now we're telling you that the Holy Spirit speaks to you. Now the Holy Spirit wants to impart gifts to you. And the gifts that he's imparting is to help you flow more easily to bring the gospel to humanity. So these Doma gifts, they lay foundation. So you can operate in the charisma gifts or the charismatic gifts that we just read, the wisdom, the knowledge, the tongues, the healing. That's not necessarily going to get anyone saved. Mm -hmm. But you can operate in that gift to bless people, and then they may say, oh, my gosh, who yes. is this person? Why did this happen? And it'll lead them to the cross. These Doma gifts lay the foundation. Verse 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. So these gifts are designed for us to grow in who? Christ. Grow in Christ. That's why the gifts are here designed for us to grow in Christ. Christ from the from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part making make it increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Now, I just like the way the scripture just keeps repeating itself over and over again. It's like it's, it's saying you need to get this right. So now he's talking about a body. Now, we know that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one, right? But it talks about the different functions, the different roles of them as individuals, but they are still one, right? Let's continue. That was, the, that was it. That was the last one, okay. verse 16. Okay. Let's flip over. So as we get ready to go into the understanding this prophetic personality, mm -hmm. Just know that there were some prophetic people in the scripture. Miriam, Elijah, Naomi, Ezekiel, Peter the Apostle. Peter the Apostle, he was an apostle, but he had a prophetic personality. You're going to see that in just a minute. Jonathan and Caleb. Mm -hmm. If you go to the next slide, now this is going to be more specific concerning that personality. The prophet sees things in terms of black and white. Right mm -hmm. or wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a simplistic worldview in which it is imperative to make sense of everything. So the prophet's going to be like, that's right or wrong. is no in between. And they could just be, now that black and white personality can give you a black and white mentality, yeah. which can cause a mental health issue. As a result, the prophet is able to assess situations how? Quickly, and they're able to discern what's good and bad. So they can become very critical. They can meet someone saying, mm -mm, they're not it. Uh -huh. An inability, they have an inability to tolerate bondage. They cannot stand to be locked up in a closed situation, and they love liberation. Uh -huh. So that's why they're going to say what the Lord says, you don't need to be doing no more, and you got this on you, and you got that. You need to be free in Jesus' name. And so some, sometimes people will think that that personality is mean. They're just seeing what they see, and they mean what they say. They operate with full disclosure. They, t they tell the truth out of honesty and for the sake of integrity. So a lot of times they'll expose themselves. Um, these are the behavioral character. No, no, no. no. That's let, it let, right let's, there. Let's go to, uh, because when you hear stuff like this, I want to bring some balance to what you're hearing, yeah. right? Let's go to our 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, because whatever gift you have, remember your gifts are designed to bring unity, yeah. right? And, and whenever you give someone a gift, if they're not trained to use that gift, they could cause more harm than good, right? 1 Corinthians 13, let's start at verse uh, 11. So it says, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, when I matured, I put away childish things. So, so here's, the, here's the key. When God saves you, when God calls you, he gives you everything you need right then and there to do the job that he has called you to do. However, some of us, sometimes we're not mature yet. We're still childish in our ways, right? 
And if you give a child a lot of power, a child is going to hurt someone. It's going to do more harm than good. Let's continue. Um, what, what's, what, where I'm at? Twelve. Twelve. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Mm -hmm. And now abideth or remain faith, hope, and charity or love, these three. But the greatest of these is charity or love. So, so we see that we must have faith, we must have hope, we must have charity. But the greatest of these is love. Now, he's, he's talk, after he got through talking about the spiritual gifts, then he goes into love. And then he goes back into gifts, right? Look at yeah. uh, verse four, chapter 14. Follow after charity or love. And desire spiritual gifts. Now, he just talked about that in the previous chapter, uh, chapter 12. Um, desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy or speak with divine inspiration. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, we learn this, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh the mysteries. Now, I, I find this very interesting, uh, the writer of 1 Corinthians has just talked about everything, right? He talked about spiritual gifts, and he goes into love. And then right after that, he starts talking about tongues, right? It's as if he's saying, everything that I just told you, you're still going to reduce the Holy Spirit to speaking in tongues, right? Do you see that in the text, right? And he's saying, that's not important. Who cares about speaking in tongues? What he say, look at verse four, uh, chapter 1 again. 14, I'm sorry, verse 1 and 2. Follow after charity. That's the dominant factor. And desire or pursue spiritual gifts. But rather that you may prophesy. Continue. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaks not to people but to God. Right. Don't nobody understand what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Howbeit in the spirit he speaks the mysteries. Mm -hmm. Drop down to verse 26. How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you has a psalm, has a doctrine, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying or to build up in growth. So when we all come together, he's saying that we all have giftings. Did you see what he listed? Let's yes. read that again. How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you has a psalm? We has, all have a song or something. We have something in us, right? What else do we have? We have doctrine. We have doctrine. And tongues. Mm -hmm. And revelation knowledge. And interpretation. Let all things be done to edify people. So whatever we have been equipped with, at the end of the day, it's designed to edify, right? So we're going to look at the example of a prophet uh, in scripture. Uh, we're going to go to... Uh, Acts. So hold on just a sec, pa Pastor Gary. I want to I want to bring to your um, knowledge some more personality traits. If you go to the eighth slide, mm -hmm. um, they judge and evaluate everything, even situations that have nothing to do with them. They need to have goals and a reason to live. They tend to be visionaries. Number four always makes me laugh. They have a compulsion for honesty, integrity, and transparency. Um, they are intolerant of perceived rebellion, hypocrisy, and, um, de and denial, especially in leadership. Mm -hmm. They have a large range of emotions, intense, passionate extremes. Like they're like mountains and valleys, mountains and valleys. The next slide talks about the weaknesses, the major weaknesses of the prophetic personality. Mm -hmm. Number one says they can be what? Judgmental. Judgmental. Number two says they can be what? <laughs> Unforgiving. Number three says they can walk in what? Bitterness. Because if you don't do what I say do, I don't like you. Mm. Because you are full of sin and rebellion. And I'm going to cut you off. And if you cross me wrong, that's it. Um, enduring battlefield of the there's a there's an enduring battlefield for the prophet. They can be un they can have an unforgiving spirit, and that can be destructive to humanity. 
But that's what we're walking in that personality specifically to bring people to Christ in love. But a weakness and an immature prophetic personality can destroy people and not build them up. They can be non-relational. I don't deal with people. Because people, they're rebellious, they lie, the leadership mm. is crooked, and they have an excuse as to all of everybody else's issues, wow. not realizing that you yourself, you're critical and judgmental. Yes. They tend to value principles and truth mm. as more important than relationships. My relationship with you doesn't matter. What you need to do is receive the truth in Jesus' name, and that's it. And that is not love. That is their weakness. Mm. And so a mature prophet, next yeah. slide, will confront sin boldly, but they will have love. They'll embrace sonship, which eradicates the orphan spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah. They are typically trailblazers. Yeah. They have a passion for excellence, and they want to restore people to God by telling them the truth, even when it hurts. And they have to learn to endure. That is the mature prophetic personality. Now, a carnal prophetic personality, they overreact. Yeah. They live in isolation. Mm -hmm. They are withdrawn. They tend to operate in hopelessness and yes. woundedness. They focus on the problems all around them. Uh -huh. um, they don't want to be in relationships. When you make a mistake, that's it. And they tend to be negative. Wow. That is the carnal prophetic personality. So I want to give you an example right? of someone who, who has that characteristics that we see in Scripture, and that's in Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5, we're going to start at verse 29. Okay. So now, let's now uh, verse 29, let's read that real quick. Okay. Then Peter, now remember he's an apostle, and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. So, so we, we one That's of the strong. things that one of the things that Pastor Lane said earlier was that a prophet tends to think in black and white, and then they judge a thing whether it's right or wrong. So, as we're looking at the characteristic of Peter here, we see that he's he's only thinking in black and white, and he's only concerned what is right is wrong. However, one of the things about a, a prophet is is they tend to speak quickly. I mean, think about Peter, right? The prophet tends to speak right away. Yeah. I mean, why do they speak so quickly? Because they believe that they're right about everything, everything right? Yeah. And since I'm right about everything, even if you prove me wrong, it's not that I'm wrong. It's just that you don't understand where I'm coming from. <laughs> they, they, they tend to... They tend to just blurt out stuff. They tend to jump right in. They just, they're just so impulsive, right? And even when you back me in a corner and tell me that I'm wrong, then I'm going to operate in my cutoff spirit. <laughs> Don't want anything to do with you. That's the way Peter operated, right? Yeah. He was just quick. Yes. Very quick, right? Let's yes. look at the uh, verse 29 again. So verse 29 from the New Living Translation. <laughs> This is good. But Peter and the apostles replied, I'm reading from the New Living Translation, we must obey God rather than any human authority. Now, I like how they say Peter and the other apostles. But whose name are they referring to Peter. first? Peter. Peter. Because he's always quick at the mouth, right? You want to you know who a prophet is? It's a person who's always quick. Quick to say something. Always have a response, right? Look at the uh, verse 30. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead after you killed him by hanging him on the cross. Can you can you feel the of the and you killed him and y'all hung him on the cross? Right. That's why we're not listening to you. We listening to God. So one one of the other things about a prophet is when they see black and white, they tend to assign blame quickly. You are guilty because you are a murderer. You are guilty because you made a mistake in the past. Remember, the scripture says that you killed our what? Ancestors, right? So uh, prophets tend to drudge up stuff from the past, and they hold that against you. Because you were wrong. And because you were wrong once, you're always going to be wrong. Remember that a prophet, a, a prophet is very judgmental. 
right? An immature prophet. When you, when you go before a judge, when you're standing before a judge, the first thing, the judge is looking down at some documents that they have handed him, right? Yes. While you're saying, I'm so sorry, the judge says, well, let's see, were you sorry in 92? Were you sorry in 94? Were you sorry in 2001? We, that's the same way a prophet operates, an immature prophet, right? It's like there is, they demand forgiveness for their mistakes, but there is no forgiveness for your mistakes. So when you operate under this character, we're telling you this so that when you operate with this characteristic that you're very you mindful yes. of what's going on. Yes. Look at this verse again. It does again. not make you a bad person. It just means that that personality needs to be, it needs to be pruned. Because that forful, forcefulness and that truth bearing, it's needed. It's, it's needed. needed. It's, you know, we need prophets to say what they believe and speak out. Remember, uh, Peter said, thou art Christ, son of the living God. And Jesus says, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. I mean, you just, you just quick at the mouth. You're just talking. But that didn't even come from you, Peter. That came from God. Look at verse 30 again. Okay. So verse 30 says, the God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead after you killed him by hanging him on the cross. Verse 31, mm -hmm. then God put him in the place of honor at his right hand as prince and savior. He did this so people of Israel would repent of their sins and be forgiven. Now, one thing about prophets, too, is that prophets recognize authority. Yes. Yes. Listen to what he said. He says, you were murderers, but he just says, but God exalted him and God put him at his right hand. So a prophet recognizes authority, and a prophet only respects authority. The flip side of that is that a prophet rebels against authority also. So it's not that it's, they want a certain authority. You can be in a position, but prophets want you to operate the way they think you should operate. When they're immature, yeah. You know, uh, the word chairman comes from, uh, you ever heard somebody say you're the chairman of the board? Well, that term means that you are sitting in a chair around the table. And uh, back in the day, furniture was very expensive. Right. So most of the people were standing around this, this table talking, but the person who was in charge, the chairman, was sitting in a chair. Therefore, he was the chairman of the board, right? Yeah. So, but listen, if you're the chairman of the board, and there's a prophet in the room, then the prophet is trying to tell you what to do while you're sitting in the position of authority, and you're not even the chairman. Are you, are you tracking what I'm saying? So prophets tend to become very frustrated with leadership if leadership does not operate the way leader, they think leadership should. Look at this verse again, verse 31. <laughs> so it says, then God put him in the place of honor at his right hand as prince and savior. He did this so the people of Israel would repent of their sins and be forgiven. No. Yes. They recognize authority, but they always hang it on repentance and forgiveness, yeah, right? That's that, that's that prophetic um, flow. Repent, John the Baptist. Repent for the kingdom. Of, mm -hmm. Turn from your wicked ways. Because they're always, you need to repent, 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 repent. They always have to remember, forgive them because they know not what they do. They have to remember that. Or not, or they'll just, can you see it? Like they could be so uh, imbalanced mm -hmm. and off to themselves and mean. A lot of times that prophetic gift and that pastoral yes. gift will clash. Why? <laughs> because the prophet is like, hmm. And then the, the pastor is like, just calm down a little bit. And they can clash because you want to calm down too much. Well, you want to cut people's heads off too much. Well, then they shouldn't be doing what they ain't supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. No, you can't operate like that. So there's a maturity that is needed in that prophetic personality and that prophetic gifting. Mm -hmm. You're right. Let's look at the uh, next verse. Verse 32. We are witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Spirit who is given by God to those who obey him. So a prophet is driven by ideology, right? Once they have an idea, once they have something in their mind, this is it. We're not changing this. Matter of fact, I believe in it so much that I'm going to witness 
to this thing, right? You see that in the verse, right? It says that we are going to be a witness for this. This is, the, this is what's going on. Which is good because they're operating under the Holy Ghost. Right. Mm -hmm. Verse 33. When they heard this, the high council was furious and decided to kill them because they were preaching the gospel. But one member, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, who was an expert in religious law and respected by all the people, stood up and ordered that the men be sent outside the council chamber for a while. Mm -hmm. So all of this talking is going on, and then that one man stands up and says, can y'all leave for a minute? We, we've got some housekeeping to do. We, we need to talk without you in our presence. Verse 35. Then he said to his colleagues, men of Israel, take care what you are planning to do to these men. Amen. Some time ago, there was that fellow Thaddeus who pretended to be someone great. About 400 others joined him, but he was killed. And all the, his followers went their various ways. The whole movement came to nothing. Verse 37, after him... At the end of the census, there was Judas of Galilee. He's telling them. He's talking to them, telling them a story. He got people to follow him, but he was killed too. And all his followers were scattered. So my advice is leave these men alone. Let them go. If they are planning and doing these things merely on their own, it will soon be overthrown. Wow. Verse 39. But if it is from God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. So if it's from God, you can't do anything about it. It's going to come to pass. So don't waste your time fighting it. So look at, look at. Um, the message. I want to go back to the message that um, that Peter was re was repeating because the message that each gifting has to repeat is the message of the gospel, mm -hmm. and you are designed to portray that message in your own God ordained spiritual yes. gifting. Do you understand? So um, the mercy person, you're gonna we're gonna talk about them later on in the weeks, is going to lead people to cross but in the spirit of mercy. Mm -hmm. A prophetic person is going to lead people to cross, but in a very direct manner, to bring forth repentance yes. because God is coming, you need to go to the cross. So we don't judge, they just mean and they just, well, they're too soft. No, the prophetic person needs a mercy person in their life, and the mercy person needs a prophetic person in their life to balance them out. You see? So this was the message. Um, slide number 13. God had sent Jesus. The Jewish leaders had killed Jesus, the person whom God sent. Uh -huh. Jesus was now sitting at God's right side. People are called to repentance. People would have to believe the message and receive the Holy Ghost. That is the message. It is the gospel. It is salvation. And them and the rest of them did not want to receive that. Right. So when you are operating in your prophetic personality there are going to be them that do not want to hear what you're saying they're going to oppose you but dude said just leave them alone if it's God it's going to go forth if it's not they're going to die anyway so you don't have to do anything do you see so if that prophetic person is operating in their flesh God is going to get them don't even worry about it you just keep praying one of the uh, characteristics of a prophet too is uh, they like to fix something, right? So uh, people who are, operates as a prophet, uh, they like broken things so that they can fix it, right? So uh, prophets tend to, I just say, they tend to go after broken people, right? Because uh, especially if those who are not mature in this gift, if you, if this characteristic, we're talking about the characteristics of a prophet, right? So the character, those who operate in that characteristic, they like to go after broken people because they like to try to fix them, but they also want that person to be dependent upon them. When they're immature. When they're, I said that. Oh. She, she's <laughs> she going to get me straight, right? <laughs> I said that, right? That, that's the way they operate. It's like, I'm going to fix you. 
But if you won't let me fix you, then I'm going to get mad at you. That's yeah. Because of their carnality. They can be very controlling. That's why a prophetic gifting that is a female can easily slip into that Jezebel spirit. One of the other characteristics of people who operate in this under the uh, characteristic of a prophet is they tend to get bored easily. They will create programs, create things, and get bored with them very easily because it's not challenging to them anymore, right? right? So, uh, and that includes people. Are you guys with me? So, so it's like I'm so interested, so interested, so interested. Now I'm bored. That's why they can be non-relational sometimes. Mm -hmm. I've done what I was supposed to do. I've said what I'm supposed to said. You're good. I'm good. On to the next person that needs to repent. Now, remember, they're trailblazers, and they want to build people up. So once you're built up, there's no need for me to be in relationship with you anymore. But you don't just completely cut them off. You just know that that assignment has concluded. Do you understand? So when you are immature, you'll just cut them off. It's out of sight, out of mind. For a prophetic person, you're out of sight, you're out of mind. And then they're like, it's not that I don't like you. Like, we're, I did what I've come to do. It's, it's a wrap. What, you, what else do you want from me? I've said what I've had to say. But you cannot be that way. You can't just cut someone off. And they're not just a project. They are a soul. And they are a person. Now, will you move on? Yes. But you move on. But you're like, hey, how you doing? You're moving on. But, girl, I love you. Dude, how you doing? You got to keep that flow. Do you understand? Yes. Well, one of the uh, characteristics of people who operate this way is that they get bored and they're always looking for change and always looking for a challenge. Now, we're, we're telling you this because when people operate in these characteristics and this character, you can't put them over something that's routine. No. They're, gonna, they're not going to stay in the coffee shop and pour coffee. They're not going to do it. And if you keep them there, then no one's going to go to the coffee shop. <laughs> because they're going to start telling people that they need to drink. They're going to start telling people You're drinking off. this coffee, but you know God, because the Holy Ghost told me that God told you to stop putting all that sugar in that coffee. <laughs> they're going to tell it. Do you understand? Wherever they are. Now, they're going to make the coffee shop better. They're going to make the coffee shop look like a state-of-the-art coffee shop. Because they're a trailblazer. They're going to see what's wrong and they're going to build it. So an immature problem will come in here and say, Pastor, your coffee shop is looking real crazy. I think that you should and you should and you should and you should. Now, if the, an immature prophet, if the pastor is taking too long, they're going to catch a what? Attitude. He said, yes, sir. Was that Mr. Smith? A prophet can also be very generous, especially with their time. And remember, they're being generous because they're trying to create an immature prophet. is trying to create a dependency upon them. So I will sit down with you. I will have Bible study with you. You will meet me here every time. And you better show up, too, because I'm giving you my time. That's one thing about they will tell you what they're doing for you. Immature prophets, they're going to they're gonna announce what they're doing for you. And then after they do it for so long, they're going to tell you when you should be better. Taking, Taking too, too long. long. Yes. I don't know why you haven't got this already. We've been doing this for six weeks. Either you're going to do it or you're going to repent or not. You see? <laughs> if you go to slide 12, if you go to slide 12, one of the battlefields of the prophetic person is fractured relationships. Mm -hmm. Fractured relationship because you're too much. You're, too, you're supposed to be bold. But if you're immature, the boldness is like control and, yes. you know what I mean, intolerant of people. They are extremely hard. A prophet is extremely hard on people. Remember the story of Jonah? Yes. Dude was like, I'm not going to go over there. They already know they're in sin. First of all, I'm not going. <laughs> First of all. First, let's just get that straight. To God now. I'm not going, period. Then when, he, when he's forced to go, he says, I'm not doing it. I'm, not, I'm still not going to do it, right? And why? Because they're very judgmental. They've already made up their mind. And, one of the, and uh, here's an important thing, too. They don't like to waste time. 
So since they don't like to waste time, they tend to see people as a good cause or a lost cause. And just like Jonah, I see you as a lost cause. And matter of fact, if I don't see you as a lost cause, you should be anyway. So just rain fire down on them, get rid of them, and just start over. So you see, now look at Jonah's process. His process was in the belly of that fish. God had to deal with him severely. Listen now, that prophetic personality and even that prophetic gifting, their process is harsh. It's hard because they're so, they have to be. If you go back and look at those prophetic people, yeah. they were, and they're very ca- charismatic and demonstrative. So they're laying on their sign and they're cooking stuff with, with animal dung. You see what I'm saying? Like they're showing everybody that God is married to you. And so God tells that prophet to marry the prostitute. Like it's always big and demonstrative. But when they go through their process, it is intense and it can be harsh and it can be deep and it can be long. And they go through um, um, brokenness and they go in the in the fire of affliction. So that they can be, they can, they've got to come through as pure gold because their mouthpiece is whatever they, y'all. One time it was raining outside and Pastor Gary, I felt, was watching TV too long. And so it was raining. I said, Charles, you watching TV? You need to get up. And like, you act like you don't want me to rest. Well, there's things to be done. And I hope lightning strikes that TV. <laughs> and guess what happened? I am not even kidding you. Just a few minutes later, that TV, and he said, see what I'm saying? Life and death isn't about, well, if you would have listened in the first, you see, so everything that you say, it comes to pass. So you've got to be careful. That's why you have got to go through a process that is completely different from the other giftings. Now, when you are a carnal, now I feel the wind of God. When you are a carnal prophet, you will buck up against the person who God assigned to you to take you through the coals and to take you through the fire. Every prophetic person needs another prophetic person to perfect their gifting. There's one school that's talked about in the scripture and it is the school of the prophets. Mm-hmm. I want to look at something in scripture. Let's let's look at uh let's look at it. Let's go to first Kings. 19. My God. First Kings chapter 19. Help us, God. Help us out. Sometimes prophets tend to be very uh uh what's the word I'm looking for? They can be prideful and very arrogant. Yeah. Like like I know I'm I'm the man, or I know I'm the woman, right? But then they go through these highs and they have low lows. Jesus. Look at uh, look at uh, First Kings uh, nineteen and start at verse one. And Ahab told Jezze all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Now you see that prophetic strength. Now now just prior to to this, uh, you know. Uh, Elijah, he was like, yeah, pour water on it, do all this other stuff, you know, because they can be very like, you know, God is with me. He's on my side. So they can be kind of showy, you know, like to show off. Right. They like they like these highs. Right. Uh, Let's continue. Um, Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, so let the gods do to me and more also if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. So that season was over. Mm -hmm. Verse 4. But he himself went a day's journey into the where? Wilderness, no fellowship, isolation, and came and sat down under the juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die. See, see, I read this to say that people who operate under this character, risk, under this character, they're always looking for greatness, 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 right? And after that moment has passed, they feel like, woe is me. What am I going to do now? There's nothing for me to do, right? And it also speaks of the fear that some of them operate in, right? So it's like, God is with me, God is with me, 
now someone threatens me and I flee. So, so, so it's not that someone threatened you, it's that someone came up against you. So immature prophets, whenever you come up against a person who operating in that prophetic uh, character, when you come up against them, it can cause them to flee or to run or to cower down or to back away, right? And the work will not get done. So they never get through their process and they don't mature. Now look, I'm going to read New Living Translation. Um, so Jezebel sent this message to Elijah, verse 2. May the God strike me and even kill me if by this time tomorrow I have not killed you just as you killed them. There is always a spirit of death assigned to that prophetic person. Because you are speaking the truth. You're speaking against darkness. You're causing people to repent. You're exposing lies. And so, of course, that uh, the spirit of the, it's the grim reaper that is coming for you and wants to shut you down. And then it says in verse 3, Elijah was afraid and fled for his life. He went to Beersheba. Now, you just called down fire from heaven. Now you're running from a witch. Elijah was afraid and fled for his life. He went to Beersheba, a town in Judah, and he left his servant there. Then he went alone to the wilderness, traveling all day. He sat down under a solitary broom tree and prayed that, that he might die. Depression. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life, for I am no better than my ancestors who have already died. So people who operate on the spirit they can feel the love of a father very strong. They can feel it very strong. They can feel like the father has their back, right? However, whenever someone comes against them or whenever someone challenges what they're saying, they feel like that same love from that father has departed. And they feel a sense of abandonment. They, 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 they walk in that orphan spirit. Whenever you uh, meet someone who's operating this characteristic of a prophet, they tend to have an orphan spirit. It's, woe is me. I'm doing this by myself. I'm all alone. There's no one else left but me, right? Yeah. So they can be very wounded individuals. Mm -hmm. And that's how the enemy, when you're young, the enemy will wound you so that you can't speak and operate as you get older. Verse 5, then he laid down and slept under the broom tree mm -hmm. but he was sleep but as he was sleeping an angel touched him and told him get up and eat see that prophetic person needs someone in their life to tell them get up now you stop it get up and eat get up and go he looked around and there beside his head was some bread baked on a hot stone and a jar of water so he ate and drank and lay down again mm -hmm. depressed then the angel of the Lord came again and touched him and said, get up and eat some more or the journey ahead of you will be too much for you. You still have work to do. So he got up and he ate and drank and the food gave him enough strength to travel 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Sinai, the mountain of God. There he came to a cave where he spent the night. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I like the version that says that they said arise. Because remember, he was in a low place. So, so it's like God has to show up. He has to send someone to tell you to arise. Get up. Arise. 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 Why? Because you still have a journey ahead of you, and you're going to need strength. Uh, one thing about the people who operate in that spirit is like I'm working toward this goal. I'm all into it. I'm putting everything I got into it. And once it happens, then they really don't feel like they've accomplished anything. And they don't take praise very well. So since they don't feel like they accomplished anything, then they go down to that low place. And it's up to someone else who have a different gifting from the Holy Spirit to tell them, arise, arise, get back up, right? Because they tend to, it's like a roller coaster ride yes. with a prophet. Uh, people who have, uh, who have people who are people with friends, who operate in that gift, it's like when you call them, you're like, hello? You, you, you're you're kind of nervous. You know, when, you, know what you're when, gonna get. when you see them in public, you're like, you don't know whether to wave or what because you are you don't know how they're going to come across that day, right? Remember, not necessarily the office of a prophet. We're talking about that character, that yeah. personality. Yeah. 
Are you enjoying this? Yeah. So, so Pastor Gary, you were saying that they don't, they don't, they, they can do great. See, he just did a great thing. He called one man, came against all those um, enemies of God, one man. And then he became very depressed and he didn't see that God had used him mightily. So a lot of times that prophetic character, they, they do great things, but they don't really receive it. It's called imposter's syndrome. You can look that up. It's imposters. They feel like they're fake. They feel like they're not doing enough. They feel like they feel like and then it can make them go into a depression. Like you just found money to build a whole charter school in Goldsboro that never existed. So they're working and working and working and they're hearing from God and they're building and God is showing who to put in place. And this project took six months. And then after that, they go into this depression. And then people are like, that is wonderful. You got this many teachers and you've got this. Oh, and they're just like, but anybody could have done that. Mm -hmm. Anybody could have done that. I'm going to be transparent. So I'm taking these classes. I have a 3.7 GPA. Working and doing my, but that does not, I made the dean le, dean's list twice. That does not move me because I don't have a what? 4.0. You could have done better. You could have. And then when you get the 4.0 and you could be cum laude, whatever, anybody could have done that. It, they have a hard time uh, celebrating yeah. themselves, yes, validating themselves. And that can put them in a place of depression. They, they'll tend to feel not good enough. And, that, and that's that wounded, woe is me personality. Also, uh, one of the things you need to remember about them is that they have a hard time uh, celebrating their accomplishments but they also have a hard time allowing you to celebrate them. However, they do want the celebration, but they act like they don't want to receive it, right? <laughs> you understand? You know, it's like, who am I talking to today? Who am I dealing with today, right? So when it comes to uh, when you're dealing with this person who has this personality, remember, arise. Arise. Get up. Get up. It's, it's that gentle encouragement. Get up and eat. Let's keep going. Get up and do this. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Just a gentle nudge, right? Gosh, man. So, uh. Yes. <laughs> oh, your, your next number 11. Oh, what was you saying? I don't know if you were going there. But no, I wasn't. But, uh, oh, okay. My computer's uh, freezing. But uh, one of the things, too, about a prophet is that uh, they're driven to excellence, right? Not only does it need to be done, but it has to be done in excellence, right? Well, really, it's a perfectionism when they're immature. Mm -hmm. Perfectionism. So there's a difference between perfectionism, which cannot be attained, and excellence. Right. So if it's not done to perfection, if it's slightly, it's not good enough. I should have known. I should have done better. So since they are driven to excellence, when you're celebrating your C or your B, they're not celebrating with you. Matter of fact, they don't even understand why you're celebrating <laughs> in the first it's the place, truth, right? It's the whole <laughs> truth. Now, we're teaching you this because, remember, these are people that are in the body of Christ. These are not people who are operating outside the body of Christ. These are people who are in the body of Christ who have been given this redemptive gift by the Holy Spirit, but this gift also has a low side or weak side. So it's up to the body of Christ to strengthen that person. Remember, the scripture says every joint supplies, right? So we have a tendency when we run across certain people in church who have who operate in a certain character, our tendency is to avoid, shut them off, don't want to have anything to do with them. But, you know, I, I'm not even drinking coffee no more. I'm drinking water now from now on because I don't want to go in there and deal with that person, right? But that doesn't help. The, the person is for the body. So that doesn't help. So if you're tired of dealing with that prophet, grab somebody who has the gift of mercy. Yes. And, and take them with them. you. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hey, do that one. Which one? Number 11. Go ahead. Okay. His favorite <laughs> question, the, they always want to know the mind of Christ. What are you saying, God? What direction are you going in? So they always want to know why. So when you have that child, it's like, why? What color are those shoes, Daddy? They're black. Why are they black? Because they took the leather and they dyed it black. But how do you know that's black? Is that blue black? Is that 
blue, blue, black? Is that purple, black? They, they just want to know why and why. And so don't shut down your prophetic child who's always asking why and always wanting to talk and always wanting to challenge you in what you're saying. You have the ability to mature them. So when we think about, when we think about that, we think about prophets like Jeremiah, right? Uh, a prophet, some of, some of the prophets, they want you to get it so bad that it's going to keep, they're going to stay with you and stay with you and stay with you and stay with you, right? And we see that when, uh, when the children went into captivity, their prophet, Jeremiah, went right along with them, right? Because there was an assignment that he wanted. And some prophets, some of them, they'll cut you off real fast, but others don't know when to let go. They don't know when to let go, right? So it's like, why did he go into captivity with him? Was it just that he was just like, you're going to get this. You're going to get this, right? And sometimes they don't know when to let things go. So they're like, please get it. Please get it. And then they can see if you don't get it, you're going to die or this is going to come upon you. You're going to get leopard. Please, please. And just stop it. You've said what you had to say. You've gone the distance. Remove yourself. So we, we have already said that they're very hard on themselves. They beat themselves up a lot. And uh, they don't have a lot of passion in relationships. Remember, the purpose of the relationship is to fix or change someone. If you don't need fixing or you don't need changing, Jesus. I'm out. I'm going to find me a project somewhere else, right? I'm just telling you, this, this is the characteristic. So when you have these friends in your life and, and they call you and they say, what's wrong? They say, how are you doing? Fine. What's wrong? Nothing. Okay, I'll talk to you later. There's nothing to fix. So I don't need to talk to you. There's nothing going on in your life. <laughs> Mr. Vick is laughing. <laughs> There's nothing going on in your life, so let me call someone who has an issue that I can fix. So most of the time when you're talking to the uh, people who operate in this characteristic, you're making up problems just to have a relationship. <laughs> Y'all laughing, but this is true. You're, you're creating problems just to have this person in your life. What's wrong with you today? Oh, fi- oh, you know what? I have a headache. I, what did you eat? Why do you have a headache? What did you eat? Are you drinking enough water? Are you- they have something to fix now. Yeah. Sometimes I'll say, Pastor Gary, he'll be resting he'll be chilling i don't know for are there any other women Why are you always talking about me babe <laughs> D- babe just go with it <laughs> have you does any other woman not like to see a woman a, a man rest too long like don't don't rest too long do, is any girl sheree come on like do, like you slept for an hour the nap the people even said that the hour is too long it's supposed to be 20 minutes you slept for an hour <laughs> so so sometimes Pastor Gary will be chilling, and I'll walk in, and I'll say, what's the matter? He'll say nothing. I'm like, mm, something's your spirit, something. He's like, nothing's wrong. I'm like, are you sure because I'm sensing? He's like, nothing's wrong. That's what, it's something wrong now. I'm trying to watch the TV. <laughs> <laughs> Go to slide 12. We're going to wrap this up. Now, sometimes the prophetic person will know that there's something wrong and sense something that they don't even realize yet. So you have to know when to ask that question and when not to. Because right now it's 9 o'clock and you're already sensing what's to come, but they're not going to realize that something's wrong until 1 o'clock. Yay, glory! The battlefield, of course, are fractured relationships. Here's the legitimacy lie. That they believe I can solve my own problems by myself. I got it. And that is a legitimacy lie. Here's the birthright of a prophet. This is their prophetic person's personality's birthright to help others obtain their birthright and destiny. It's to rebuild them and to restore Mm. them. They have that passion to do that. The creation day that is assigned to that prophetic person is the separation of light from the dark. 
Can you see black or white? Mm -hmm. Yes or no, right or wrong. Um, spoke the word to bring order and structure. So when God said, let there be light, he spoke that to bring order and structure. And then the tabernacle item, every gifting of these manifestation gifts is connected to a tabernacle piece of furniture. The tabernacle um, item for this this um, prophetic character is the brazen altar because it deals with what? Sin. And so the prophet stands for righteousness. So the prophet's trying to get everybody to the brazen altar. You need to go to the brazen altar. In other words, repent. God showed me you're wrong. Mm -hmm. You see? One, uh, one last uh, character flaw or issue with this, uh, with, a, with a people who do this is they refuse to compromise. They won't right. give an inch. Just absolutely refuse to compromise. And since they refuse to compromise on anything and everything, there's always destructions in their relationships. Uh, this person, ca the character of this person does not have long-standing relationships. Listen, when it comes to a person who has this character, either you love them or you don't. No, it ain't you don't. Either you love them or you hate them. Oh, my gosh. I'm telling you the truth, right? Because they don't compromise, and you can feel like you're always giving and giving and giving. And if you stay in a relationship with someone who has this character too long, then you will lose yourself. You will just disappear in this relationship, right? Self-preservation. Did you enjoy this today? Yeah.